everyone, it's Karen. I wanted to start this video by just saying a huge thank you to every single one of you that follow me, that watch my videos, that leave me likes or comments. I so appreciate your time and I, I just find these videos go so fast sometimes I just don't feel like I have time to say that. So I kind of pause this one just to give you guys huge thanks. When I did my first video, I begged my four sons to follow me because I thought nobody's going to want to watch one of my videos. So I so appreciate you. I really, really do. And so today's video is going to be all about foiling without using a hot foil machine. So that means these gilding flakes and uh, laminating foils. I personally love gilding flakes, so I'm going to start this video with those. So for the first technique, you'll need a glue that dries tacky. And so the scrapbook.com glue will work. Um, Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue works very well. And Tombow Mono will also dry tacky. So any of those would work for this. You need to have a bowl of hot soapy water right nearby. And for the first technique, I'm going to use this stamp. I believe it's from Hero Arts. It's a rubber stamp. I'm going to do this on acetate first because it's a little bit easier to do this technique with acetate. I'll show it to you with paper in a minute, but here I'm just, I've got some glue on that piece of scrap cardstock and a little makeup sponge and I'm just dabbing that on all over this um, stamp. I've already got my acetate in position in my stamp positioner, you'll see here in a second. So there's the acetate and then when you stamp, now with acetate, I'm pressing much longer this time because I know it won't tear, but you'll see when it comes to paper, it's very different. So I'm just pressing that down really firmly. It will stick. This is glue, so it will stick to the acetate. And when you pull that off right away, put that stamp in the, in the hot soapy water. <laughs> and there you can see it has left a pretty good impression and you just want to set that aside to dry. And once it's dry, you I use this soft brush and I have a Swiffer um, dusting cloth there. You could use the sponge instead of the brush, but you want to just spread some of these gilding flakes on. These are chocolate gold gilding flakes from Cosmic Shimmer. You just want to spread some of these over. Um, gilding flakes are notorious for being very staticky. Personally, I find the Nouveau ones much more staticky than, than these Cosmic Shimmer ones for some reason. But just take your brush or the sponge, whatever you're using, your finger would work, and just gently brush these in, and you'll see that the pattern comes out. That stamped pattern is there. And then I just use that Swiffer cloth at the end to just clean off whatever's left over. And so there you can see that acetate is foiled just beautifully. And you can use either side of it, so if you wanted it to be see-through, it shows up on both sides. Okay, now here is uh, a stamp. It's a clear stamp this time, and I'm just going to do this onto the paper. What you have to remember, this is glue. So when you stamp it down, you don't wait. If you wait, it will tear, and I know that because I've done that. <laughs> so push it down and lift it right up, and that's all it takes. Now you can see, well, I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it. Um, it is there and I'm going to stamp a few of these butterflies on so press straight down and lift off don't wait now I'm adding in the I let that dry set that aside to dry and I'm just adding in the gilding flakes now and brushing them around and you'll see it looks terrible at the beginning but those butterflies come out it's really quite pretty and then just a little Swiffer cloth at the end. And there you have it. So they foiled beautifully. Now, I thought I'd show you this. This, this background paper is from Craft Consortium. It's one of their ink drop lines. And I love these papers. But I kind of wanted to have some of these veins uh, foiled. So I'm just using that scrapbook.com glue. Um, and just it comes out really quickly but you just put it on and you'll see it's dry there it's tacky and when you're at that point you can add these flakes on exactly the same as everything else and it just gives an extra little shine to that that background 
Okay, so here I've got a piece of cardstock with a piece of, I think I used die cut and bond, but any double-sided adhesive would work for this technique. Um, and I'm just brushing on all these gilding flakes, really working them in. I'm using my finger to see if there's any sticky parts. And if there are, you just want to put a few more, more flakes on. And I like to use my bone folder to gently press that down, uh, just to make sure it's adhered to that die cut and bond. And so then you get this beautiful piece of foiled cardstock that you could either die cut, or in this case, I'm going to use an embossing folder. So I'm just misting the back of it there. And I believe this is a 3D embossing folder, the fallen leaves. So I've run it through, and there you can see that pattern on it. And I think that's really quite pretty. Okay, so here I've got a piece of background paper and I've put some die cut and bond on it. I have a stencil and I'm going to put some Versamark ink on the back of that stencil because when I take that release paper off, it's gonna be sticky everywhere and you don't want the stencil to stick. So the Versamark helps to release it from that. So I'm pulling off the, the backing paper, just putting the stencil in, in place. Um, I don't push it down too hard, but you're gonna rub this gilding flakes in and it will go into all those openings. I'm just working it in. Now when you pull that off, all that top is still sticky. And so I've got that micro glitter and I'm going to just sprinkle that all over. So just shaking that on. And then I just use my finger to rub that in and then you can tell if there's any places that need a bit more because it'll be sticky. So just add, keep adding it in. And again, I used a, a bone folder just to burnish it a little bit to make sure it was stuck down. And so when it's all done, you get this really um, shiny, sort of frosty look almost to that. Okay, so now we're using laminating foil. Here, I've got a stencil over patterned paper and I am using that same scrapbook.com glue and I'm just going through the stencil, just dabbing it on, trying to make sure it goes into all the little nooks and crannies in there. And then I set that aside to dry. It was a little bit damp, so once it's dry, uh, then you can start to foil it. So I've got this sheet of foil from Decofoil um, and I'm just spreading it on. You want to try to put it on so you don't get bubbles or wrinkles and I just use my finger to burnish that. And you can kind of feel where, where the stencil's been, where the raised bits are. And then when you pull it off, it sticks to that, that glue. So you don't even need a laminator for this one. I thought that was quite pretty actually the way it turned out. Okay, so these, uh, these are adhesive sheets that score tape and it's just a larger one. I've got an alco alcohol inked background. Now I just die cut those adhesive sheets as they were. I didn't stick it to cardstock or anything else. After I did the video, I was thinking, hmm, maybe I should have done that. So. <laughs> Maybe I should have, I don't know. It worked. I, I put them down. There's no raised texture to these, so it's quite flat. So depending on what you want, I think maybe either stick it to cardstock and then glue that down or just die cut the, the adhesive as I did. But I'm just burnishing it. I've got those both on and I'm just making sure they're stuck down. And then I did these one at a time. I didn't trust myself to do two at a time, but here's one at a time. <laughs> so it's just, again, I'm burnishing that with my finger, just making sure it's sticking to all those leaves. And then when you pull it up, you can see it's foiled really well. And the same with the bottom one. So I thought that was kind of fun. Now I've, I cut that word thanks I actually took the s off I, I didn't have enough room so I took the s off and I, I die cut it a few times stacked it up and then I stuck this one down to the, the stacked die cuts and now I'm going to foil the top of that 
You could also um, just use that tape as it is, foil it, and then die cut the foiled part. I wasn't sure when I did it which way to go, so I just did it this way. But it, it foiled really well, and that was to go on this card, so. I do have cards done at the end of the video for you guys. Um, okay, so here I've just die cut circles, and again, I didn't stick them to cardstock. I just cut them as they were. It was a little bit easier. And I'm just sticking these onto this uh, acetate, just in a random pattern. And now I've got this, I think that's ra rainbow shattered glass from Decofoil, that, that foil. I've taken the release paper off all those little circles, and now I'm going to put this uh, foil down. And again, try to be careful not to get wrinkles or anything, or it, it won't adhere. Just sticking it down, rub it in with your finger. You can feel where all the circles are. Now, when you go to take it off, go slowly, because I noticed I was uh, getting, I was missing a few spots, so you just have to rub them in a bit more and it will stick to the gluey parts. That foil is quite fun. It's really psychedelic. <laughs> okay, now here you can use tape, uh, double-sided tape, and you can use all kinds of thicknesses uh, for this one, I use the same, same thickness. I'm just doing this onto pattern paper, and I've got my my card fit front lined up with the grid mats, and I'm just using the mats. Now, if you cross over the tape like I did here, just remove the release paper on the bottom layer. And I've got this uh, foil. It's from Heidi Swap, um, the mink foil. It's in a champagne color, so it's not as bright and in your face is the other gold that I was using. <laughs> so I'm going to remove the release paper on these and I folded it up. I just felt that was easier, but you'll see I still flub up at the bottom here. I thought I had ruined it. It ended up being okay. Uh, and just press it down again and then you'll have this beautifully foiled card front. I actually added in a second line. I don't know if that was right or not, but I, I just thought, oh, maybe I will. Okay, so there are lots of printed patterned um, pieces of cardstock that it's a laser print, and they will also work really well for foiling. That foil is from Gina K, and I, these need to go through the laminator. So I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, guys, but what I do is I run it through. I have my laminator already preheated on a 5 milliliter setting. I run it through, and then I flip it over, and I run it through again. And I honestly don't know if that makes any difference or not, but it works better somehow, I think. I've had trouble with foiling little sentiments and things, and if I do that, it seems to work a bit better. Not always, but usually. Now with that background piece of foil, save that because you can trim that down and use a spray adhesive to stick to another card front. And so that would make a quite fun second card. Now you can also get these clear acetate uh, toner sheets and they are really quite fun. Um, when you look at them, it's tricky to know, but the one side is very black and the other is a more matte color. Uh, I don't think you can see that very well in the video, but the matte side is the one that you, that you want to foil. So I have my parchment sheet there. I've got a card shim in it, and I am just trying to layer these foils across this toner sheet. I just thought that would be kind of fun, maybe. So I ran that through the same way as I always do, up one way and down the other way. And it's set on the 5 mil setting, and it, it came out beautifully. So I don't know if that makes any difference, you guys. I really don't. It's just what I do. So here's how this one turned out. It's really a fun little acetate sheet, that. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with the cards that I have made out of this, but I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration. And truly, once again, thank you for stopping by, for coming, and I really hope that you'll come back again for the next video. 
Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.